morning, everyone. Let's all stand up together. Let's all stand up together. Say this after me. I am expecting my greatest blessing ever today because great grace is upon us all. We declare the glory, the presence of God, the power of God, the goodness of God. We will see today demonstrations of the Holy Ghost in this place. Let's give a shout of victory right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Put your hands together. Welcome to the mountain. You know the Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Did you come to praise him? Did you come to praise him? Come on, this is an easy song, you'll catch it. Here we go. Everybody sing.
draws near in my time Oh God, it is He 
We've stepped up. We've stepped up. We're stepping up. We have hungered and desired the glory and the glory, saith the Lord, is what you'll see. I found a congregation hungry for me. So reach out with your faith. Take it all, take it all. Step up into me and you will see what you've been looking for and more and more and more and more in that higher realm, in that higher place. Things you've never seen, things you've never heard, things that I have had to hold back till the time has come for the release and heaven's release is here. Heaven's release is now. <clears throat> And so we receive from you, Father. We receive from you, O oh God. Days, <clears throat> days of heaven <clears throat> on this earth. Thy will be done. Thy will be done in this church as it is in heaven. So let the place be filled with your presence and your goodness and your power. We receive, we receive, and we receive. Come on, lift your hands and just receive from the Lord right now. Thank you, Father. Hey, hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say this after me. We receive, we receive the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. In this place. In this place. This is the time of the supernatural. This is the time of the supernatural. And we're looking for you. We're looking for you. Everywhere. Everywhere. And in every place. And in every place. Let your Holy Ghost flow. Let your Holy Ghost Somebody, as you're being seated today, reach out, hug someone, welcome them to church, <clears throat> and then you can be seated. Wow! Hallelujah. Wow! Thank wow! You, wow, Jesus. wow! 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 Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well. I know, I was that close. You were but this it will, close. It will come soon. It will come soon. Yep. Be patient. Right. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to have you here at Eagle Mountain International Church. We welcome you. We are so glad that Patsy Caminetti is with us today. Hallelujah. And there she's not. She must have stepped oh, out for a moment. There she is. She's right there. Where is she? Right oh, there, there she is. is. Welcome. It's good to have you here. My goodness. We have her with us today, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, Tuesday, Tuesday night. In this, this two month intensive of prayer at Eagle Mountain International Church, Patsy's right on time. Praise God, we welcome you today. Those of you that are here for the first, first time, just raise your hand, I wanna see if you're here for the very, welcome. Welcome, hey, welcome. welcome, come on. Welcome then to church today. Now, Pastor, I know there are some folks watching online. Maybe, maybe this is your first time to watch us online. And we want to welcome all of you today, but especially those that have just, this is your first time to click in. So we want to welcome you. Welcome them, please, if you would, to Eagle Mountain. Wow. Wow. 
Those of you who are here today for the first time, we have a gift in the lobby for you. If you'd like to stop by the Connect station, we have something, or the visitor station, we want to bless you with something. We are so glad that you're here, Terry. My heart is just overflowing. I know. I feel it. Just feel it. bubbling. This just is coming right here. Bubbling, Do you feel it? Do you feel it going that way? Bubbling yeah. on over. Pastor Bubbles this <laughs> okay, morning. Okay, here. <laughs> That may be your new nickname, honey. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> but if you say so, dear, that's uh, Pastor Bubbles. Pastor Bubbles, sorry. <laughs> okay, I hope I can keep a straight face through this. I'll step back and wait. That'll help me. Thank you. Well, you know, Pastor said two months of prayer. We didn't mean that Pasty, Patsy was going to be here for two months. But we are right in the middle of our, our core value on prayer we always pray about everything. 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 For some people, everything. That's, that can be overwhelming, the very thought of that. How in the world can you pray about everything always? And so there are things that the Bible teaches us about prayer. And I've always said this, if your prayer life is, is dull, dry, listless, I'm not talking about your hair, I'm talking about your prayer life. And if that's the case, then you're not doing it right. Because prayer is an encounter with God himself. Amen. 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 And you, have to, you have to learn some things from the word of God that help make it that way. That open the doors to the very throne room of heaven. Adventures in the spirit. How to pray. Oh my goodness. And uh, well, you know what? My turn is next Wednesday night. But anyway, Patsy's going to be here. So let me give you a few details about the meetings. First of all, of course, the disservice today. But tonight at 630. Can you say 630? 630. Yes, yeah, Sunday 630. night at 630. And then tomorrow, <laughs> Monday and Tuesday, 10 a.m. and 715. 10 a.m. and 715. Monday and Tuesday. Now we will have children's services uh, in the mornings through age four. Okay, so that's our any preschool, any of the kids that are preschool. So we, I don't care if they're five, but not in school, bring them on if you'd like, and they can come to the children's services and then up through sixth grade in the evenings. Say, well, what about the older kids? Listen, I started praying with my grandmother when I was about three or four years old. I had Pentecostal experience rolling under the coffee table uh, even before my dad knew Jesus. So, you know, bring them on, bring them in. You just, they'll, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. Teach your children to drink from the wells of the supernatural and that's how you do it. Okay, so that's then want to remind you of this because this is also important in this prayer core value prayer is both individual but it's also corporate so this wednesday night i'll be doing our fourth session on prayer we had quite a time last wednesday you may want to go really back good. and listen to the message uh, uh, but this wednesday will be uh, in the sanctuary but the next few weeks following that are in small groups so we can learn some things and we're going to start off by praying the word and learning how the foundation of the word and learning how to do that and to apply some of the things we've heard in this conference uh, uh, individually in those small groups. And then we have some surprise things for you as we go into the next set of core values, which is to how to be led by the spirit. And that'll be connected in prayer too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now, my, little, my chair over there is Pastor Bubbles. You oh, can I'm sit, supposed You can sit in Pastor Bubbles' chair while I do the offering. You can sit to the corner. <clears throat> yeah, so, amen. Do you appreciate Pastor Terry? I do. I do. It's offering time at Eagle Mountain International Church. Praise God. What we're going to do this morning, we'll receive the tithes and offerings in this first one, then a wonderful offering for Patsy after she speaks today. I want you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 6 and <clears throat> uh, share something with you here about what took place this week. As I talked to you about last week, I was going to be doing two weeks of television broadcast with Gloria Copeland, and we did. We taped two weeks uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, and we called it Supernatural Provision, Living in the Realm of God's Superabundance. Ten days of supernatural provision. And those broadcasts are going to be airing in November. We'll let you know when those come on. And one of the things that we talked about concerning supernatural provision, it is an unlimited 
Super abundant supply from above. That's what we define supernatural provision as. Unlimited, <clears throat> super abundant <clears throat> supply from above. It comes especially when the situation, the paycheck, the job market, the economy, and others are saying there is no way to meet this need. It's humanly impossible. That's when we see, really, that's when we see supernatural provision, not, not just when everything is great, but when the, all of these other factors come in, we are, we are living under that open window of heaven to receive that supernatural, unlimited supply. God has unusual ways, unlimited avenues of provision that supersede or go over, above, and beyond natural limitations. We are breaking through limitations around here. And we're entering into the realm of the supernatural and especially supernatural provision. Now, <clears throat> what we did on day three of our taping, we were going to be talking about, and we did talk about this, but we're talking about the connection between tithing and sowing and supernatural provision. And the fact that, that tithing is a supernatural act that produces supernatural results. Giving, sowing, is a supernatural act that produces supernatural results. And the title to that message was Tithing, Sowing, and Supernatural Provision. I wasn't completely happy with that title, but the clock was running out and I was having to get these outlines together. So... As Glory and I always do, before we roll tape, we just talk a little bit and we talk about what we're going to be speaking on. And we got under such an anointing before we rolled tape on this one that the Lord began to show us some things about it. And Gloria said to me, she said, if you aren't tithing and sowing, you aren't living in the supernatural. Hello. If you aren't tithing and sowing, you are not living in the supernatural. <clears throat> and she started talking about this, and this was brilliant. It was so brilliant that we renamed that broadcast. And she ta started talking about the circle of supernatural provision. The circle of supernatural provision is tithing, sowing, reaping. Tithing, sowing, reaping. And she was talking about not breaking the... The, the circle. And then she got on over into talking about that song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Yeah. <clears throat> so we looked up the words to it, and there's some words to it that are good, and there's some other words to it that aren't so good. But we just got into this 15-minute conversation about this circle, the circle of supernatural provision, and how the tithing, the sowing, and the reaping or the harvest of that is the circle of supernatural provision. And that circle, as you continue to do that, it doesn't stay in one size, it begins to expand. And that circle gets larger, and it gets larger, and it gets larger until you are actually affecting nations. Nations with your, with your giving. And she talked about this, Dave, you might be able to help me on this. Um, <clears throat> we, we actually, before the broadcast began, we, we rewrote just a little bit of that song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Actually, this is the first song that Gloria and I have ever written together. <laughs> and then I sang it on air. But, but here's the lyric to it. It's, it's, may the circle be unbroken so the blessing, blessing keeps on flowing. Down from heaven into my heart, supernatural provision is my part. And so, the, the, um, to the tune of... Well, may the circle be unbroken so the blessing keeps on flowing down from heaven into my heart. Supernatural provision is my part. Everybody may the circle be unbroken so the blessing keeps on flowing down from heaven into my heart. Supernatural provision is my part. Supernatural provision is my part. Supernatural provision is my part. So 
Go ahead and be seated. So I was, I was looking at one of the scriptures this morning. Give and it will be given. 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 And that circle of supernatural provision will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Father, before you we come. We thank you for this circle of supernatural provision. Tithing, sowing, reaping, tithing, sowing, and reaping. And Father, we will not break that circle. We will not stop that momentum of tithing and giving and reaping, tithing and giving and reaping, but it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Father, you are supplying us with not only everything that it takes. <clears throat> Lord, we, we claim right now $10 million over and above the operations of this church right now. Right now. We call in our harvest of seed that has been sown. We declare the rest of the building is completed. We declare we have all the equipment that we need. All the staffing, all the renovation, everything that it takes to reach out. We declare that we have the finances to support works all over the world. And you are supplying for us supernaturally and I declare supernatural provision over this congregation. Supply coming from unusual ways and from unlimited sources. Say this after me. I am a giver. I am a, giver. I am a, tither. I am a tither. I live, I live in, the in the circle of supernatural provision. Of supernatural provision. And, I and I exercise my faith as I give today. As I give today. And I receive, and I receive a, full a full supply from above, from above. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you ready to give this morning? Those of you that would like an envelope, there's one in the seat in front of you. If you're sitting on the front row, raise your hand. One of our ushers will bring one to you if you're writing a check. EMIC, those of you that are watching online, click to online contribution. Your information will come before you. And let's just worship God as we give today. Hallelujah. I came to worship Jesus. We exalt Jesus, nothing like the name of Jesus. Let all heaven, let the church proclaim. Listen, that every king and every kingdom, they're all passing away. But forever Jesus, will rule and he'll reign so we sing hallelujah hallelujah oh lord we praise your name all oh, the glory your name. Help me sing the singers. Hallelujah. 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 Oh Lord, we praise your
building. Let's just praise the Lord. You know he's worthy. <laughs> oh, Lord, we raise your name to replace Oh, Lord, we praise your, your name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Praise his Thank name. Thank you, Lord. Patsy. Hallelujah. Patsy is another one of those preachers that takes two podiums to hold her. <laughs> I wanted you to come up before we even said another thing. <clears throat> My precious friend. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I can't help myself. You can come back. <laughs> Sorry. That's I okay. I didn't mean to. That's all right. Get That's you all right. out. Pastor Bubbles. Pastor Bubbles. <laughs> Patsy and I had a little time yesterday morning, and I, I just have to tell you that. Sorry, it's kind of overwhelming me because of the preciousness when the Lord joins together. The preciousness of His assignment and the parts that He brings together, which began for us long before we knew each other. And I'm so grateful for that. So here is a stream of God's grace that He's brought to us to cause our stream to be, to be uh, increased not only in things of prayer, but things of the Spirit, not only in the how-tos of the Word, but in demonstration. And I just couldn't have, I don't know if I could have any greater expectation and thrill with Jesus for you coming and being here with us. And I have great anticipation of the work in the kingdom that'll be done in these next three days. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over Patsy right now. For her time with us, we are asking for utterance in the Holy Ghost. That, Lord, we agree with her as she has prayed that every word comes straight from heaven. Everything that is done, every demonstration, every prayer that is prayed, every word that is preached, Everything, Father, she has come fully equipped to equip this church and the body of Christ. So we receive this gift. We honor this gift. We welcome this gift. We open our hearts to this gift. And Father, we thank you for today, tonight, Monday, Tuesday, and all that she's going to deposit into this church. And we receive her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome Patsy Caminetti to Eagle Mountain International Church. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Can we just do one more thing before you sit down? Can you take those hands and put them back up to the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and the joy of heaven. We thank you for that name that has saved us, that name that dispenses salvation to others. We magnify the name of Jesus. We glorify the name of Jesus. Can you just lift up your own praise to the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
precious name Oh, how sweet Hope of her And joy of heaven Precious name Oh, how sweet Hope of earth And the joy of heaven Thank you, Jesus Can we just sing and praise that holy name? Yala mamba roson de 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 yala de 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 yala de de yabrana. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus! How mighty is the name, the precious name of Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Father. As we hear of what is happening in this place of the earth and that place of the earth, as we hear of nation that's rising up against nation and kingdom that's rising up against kingdom, and this catastrophe here and that terrible thing that's happening there, we thank you that the name of the Lord is a, a strong tower. We thank you that the righteous are in that name. But not just for the hiding in that name. But to utilize the power that is in that name for the world that we live in. We thank you, Father, for the right to that name. The divine right we have through our new birth to use that name that is above every name to conduct business in that name not only the right to use it but father we recognize the responsibility of this wonderful name that has been given to us we thank you for the privilege of prayer we thank you that this privilege came at no cost to us, but great, great cost to you. And that the privilege for us to come boldly before your throne was completely underwritten by your son Jesus and his blood. That we can come boldly as we have already and worship you today. We thank you, Father God, that we have access, common access to you, equal access to you, Un, unprecedented access to you, constant access to you. By the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, and we're so grateful, we take it not for granted, and we look into your word today to help us to appreciate and to appropriate and to utilize what's been given to us so freely that cost you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your good and your mercy endures to this generation. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to be here. I've been looking forward to coming. And uh, Terry is not the only one that treasures this connection. Connections that God makes, people connections that God makes, are, are uh, on this earth the, uh, the most valuable, the most valuable thing that we could enjoy. And distance doesn't break them and lessen it, and time doesn't either. And so these connections, it's just wonderful. Um, uh, here we, you know, my husband and I live in Australia. 
and at different times when somebody's connected, if the Holy Ghost pulls on that connection, uh, way over on the other side of the world will become real conscious of this ministry. And it's wonderful to have that. And recently did a, a prayer group that we have, uh, we're praying for you. And it wasn't just because that we know you so well or know everything that's happening here. It's because he does. And, uh, and there is a connection there. And so uh, it's just wonderful to be here, not just in heart, because we do come here in heart often as we pray for you. But it's nice to come in, in the flesh, come in person. And it, it's just really good to be here uh, years ago. Uh, Terry, how, how many years ago, Terry, did you, huh? Eight, 98. 18 years ago? 98 and 99. 98 and 99. 1998 and 1999. Uh, Terry made several trips to um, Australia on an assignment, really, of the Lord to pray, uh, to teach on prayer and to really deposit something from the heart of God on that subject. And um, that was before I was really having any uh, conscious awareness of this kind of connection. And I had absolutely no idea that my husband and, and I would be living in Australia. No idea at all. But here then, uh, years and years later, uh, 2006, my husband and daughters and I, we moved to Australia. And some of the very first people that we ever met were some of the people that uh, Terry taught way back in 1980, uh, 98 and 1999. And uh, since that time, which is going on now eight years ago that we, have, we moved to Australia, uh, one of the first things that we did was start praying. And it was an amazing thing, this, this group of people uh, it was, uh, was prepared, really, by God. And uh, so when we, uh, we moved to Australia, it's just like I just found this gift from God of these people that were so ready to pray and had been praying. And I, I told my parents, I said, I just felt like I had come home when I went there. It wasn't just the natural land. It was I'd come home to a place in the spirit that was really familiar to me and really precious in people uh, that just wanted to pray so much. And so uh, for now, eight, going on eight years, this group of people and I have prayed. And uh, we prayed and, and enjoyed times in the Spirit and were able just to do all kinds of, of, of wonderful, really, business with God. And then I came to know uh, where they got that uh, deposit that felt so familiar to me. And it was through Terry. And so, wow, I just, uh, it, I was just amazed, really, at those years and that assignment that the Lord put her on all those years before had prepared something and laid something up uh, to be used here in, in 2014. And so, isn't it amazing how God does? It's just quite amazing how, how the Lord does. And Terry, after leaving, she was telling me about this. Um, one time when I was visiting here, we were back in a room back there, and she was saying she wondered if anything came of those, those meetings. She was wondering, you know, of all that, that's such a distance to go. And, and she went back and forth quite a few times, and she just, it seemed like there, she wondered if any fruit came out of it. And I said, any fruit. I mean, it's the whole produce department. It's just amazing. So, so precious. So it, it's a, a blessing also to come and uh, get to be here while uh, this particular value of prayer is being discussed. And, and Terry has said that she and George are, are really, really looking at, the, at the, the basics, going under the hood and looking at the basics of all of these wonderful values that you have on the subject of prayer also as well. 
And so uh, I'm really glad because uh, I, my heart is way, 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 way full of some things that I believe the Lord wants you to, to, um, to come along and us to hear together and experience together. And there's some prayers that God wants us to pray together. And uh, I'm excited for what's going to happen in these services. But right now, if you will look with me into Exodus, the 17th chapter, the Bible is jam-packed full uh, with things regarding prayer. And while you're turning, Exodus, the 17th chapter, while you're turning, on this trip with me is one of the people of those, that prayer group that I pray with uh, that Terry taught years and years ago. And, and so my friend Jenny, could you please stand? And she's such a blessing. She and her husband are such a blessing to us. All right, Exodus, the 17th chapter. Now, in this chapter, we're going to look at two pictures of prayer. Now, prayer can be broken down in doctrines and principles and, and different ways that it works and things that will help us and give us tools to be able not to just, not to just have the concept of it, but to actually be able to access and engage it. You know what, you know what it's like to have uh, appliances in your kitchen that you got from somebody who really loved you and didn't know what to get you. And some new appliance, some great uh, appliance came out and so you got it and you were really excited about it and you maybe even read uh, uh, the amazing things that it could do. And, um, and now it's been a year since you've ever seen it and not ever used it. And so there are some things uh, as far as the Word of God is concerned and truths of the Word of God that they don't really do you any good unless you actually do them. <laughs> Prayer, like, uh, like Terry was saying, is a very dynamic thing if, you, if you're engaging with God, if you are uh, if you're engaging with him and his word in the right way, it absolutely is transforming every time you do it. And so instead of it being such an effort and a duty to do, it actually gives you something. You get so you live in the experience and the opportunity and the joy uh, of prayer. But uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at two pictures of prayer so that it is not just doctrine, but it actually gives you a visual, actually gives you a way to engage with what prayer is and what you can, how you can utilize it in your life. And so Exodus, the 17th chapter, is going to give us two pictures of what prayer is how prayer functions, and it is by no means the only pictures. There are pictures all through the Word of God concerning prayer, I think about, and you can remember with me, do you remember Elijah on Mount Carmel? And he puts his head between his knees, and he prays that, that it would rain. And remember that? And then the young man goes and, and sees if there's anything happening and he puts his head back down between his knees and prays again. Well, that's quite an interesting picture, isn't it? It shows us that whole picture of him praying repeatedly and closing his eyes off of, of gauging anything by what he was seeing. It, it shows us something of persistence and, and staying with what God told him to do. Uh, that the woman in Luke, the 18th chapter, they, that was asking for uh, just justice from an unjust judge, and she wouldn't let it go. She just wouldn't let it go. It's a picture of prayer. Uh, more than just a doctrine of it, it gives you a picture or an example of it. Well, here in Exodus, the 17th chapter, we're going to find two more. And so let's start reading here. It says here in verse 2, 
Therefore the people contended with Moses because in verse 1 they didn't have water and said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, why do you find fault with me? And why do you tempt the Lord and try his patience? And the people thirsted there for water and the people murmured against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? And so Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, pass on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the rod with which you smote the river Nile and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on a rock at Moab or Mount Horab and you shall strike the rock and the waters shall come out of it and the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now, so this is the first picture that we are seeing in this wilderness where there was no natural provision of water. There was no springs, no rivers in this place where they were. And the people, obviously, without water are going to die. So when Moses called to the Lord, God gave him an interesting, um, an interesting instruction. And he told him, to hit a rock. It's an interesting thing what God will do and God's ways of answering prayer and how God's provision ends up coming out. It was not likely that water would come out of a rock. And when I was thinking about this, why a rock? Why couldn't he just hit the ground and a spring come up out of the ground? Why didn't he just hit a tree or why, did he, why didn't he hit some other thing in the wilderness? Why a rock? But when God has something done, this was God's instruction to hit a rock, then the rock itself begins to be a picture for us. When we think about a rock, when we think about uh, what a rock pictures for us, it speaks of something that was. It speaks of something that is. And a rock is something that's going to be. A rock is something that was there before you were born. Isn't it true? Uh, my, my family, we're from Colorado, and my dad was raised up in the mountains and uh, among the, in the Rocky Mountains and around the ranch where my, my grandparents homesteaded, they, pioneered, they were some of the pioneers of Colorado. But he, he, where he ran and played as a little boy were uh, amazing rock formations. And here a, a few years ago, about four or five years ago, we had a great family reunion. We went back out to that ranch and daddy took us up into the cliffs where he used to play as a young boy. And he had us go in a cave that he used to play in. And nothing had changed since he had been there as a little boy. Something about that rock formation that he ran and played on, before he was a little boy, that rock was there. While he was a little boy, that rock was there. But then his children and his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren went to that same place and that rock was still there. If time continues, as long as there is this earth as it is, that rock will still be there. So when God had Moses hit the rock, it was very purposeful that it was a rock that he was engaging with because that rock speaks to us of God himself. And as you can see the picture uh, uh, that, this, that this is, and it symbolizes, is the striking of Jesus, the striking of him, out of that striking came life. Instead of vengeance coming out when he was struck, Instead of anger coming out when Jesus was struck, instead of hatred coming out when Jesus was struck in his work of redemption, life came out. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful picture. 
And so in this, we see a, a picture of the Redeemer being struck. But not only that, we see, we see the very nature of God himself. That he was, he is, and he is to come. That Jesus himself is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. So prayer engages us with a God who was, who is, and is to come. You literally, because there are things that we bring to God uh, about that are going on right now, but when you engage with God, you engage with eternity. It gets big. There is nothing that God hasn't dealt with. There, there is nothing that God can, can be confronted with that he doesn't have provision for. So in this picture, we see a wonderful thing. Jesus said in John, the seventh chapter, if you'll just turn there with me, because this is one of the great functions of prayer, privilege. Jesus said this in John 7 in verse 38. Verse 37, let's pick up this. Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice. If any man is thirsty, let him come to church and drink. Is that what it says? <laughs> let him come, let him come to a great book and drink. No. Let him come to a great, uh, a great uh, series and drink. No. It says, let him come to me and drink. These things, these wonderful tools that help us to connect with him are never the destination in themselves. That chair that you're sitting on is not the destination this morning. It's the person of Jesus that you've come for. Amen. And so it is a connection with him. He said, if you are thirsty, come to me and drink. I love that. Because it also shows us that there are other places that you could go and drink. And we do. Life makes us thirsty. Life, life will cause you to be aware of a huge need in your life. And you'll run out of, you'll run out of patience. You'll run out of your own wisdom. You'll run out of your own kindness. You'll run out of good ideas. You'll run out of your own strength, your own courage. And you can run to your friends. And you can run to the mall and go shopping. That always seems to do something, doesn't it? You can just go to the kitchen and eat. You can just, you can just run here. Or you could just go there to, to get a drink. But Jesus said, when you're thirsty, come to me. And so it, books and, and CDs and, and helps help us along the way to bring us to him. But he is the one that true thirst is quenched and only in him. So he said, you come to me and drink. Then it goes on to say, Jesus said this. He said, who you believes in me? As the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Interesting here. In verse 39, he said this he was speaking about was the, uh, was the spirit whom those who believed on him would after receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet giving because Jesus had not yet been glorified. And Jesus has been glorified now and the Holy Spirit has been given. And those that believe on him, how many of you believe on Jesus? Yeah. Then we've been given the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said here that if we would come to him and drink, that we could drink the Holy Spirit from Jesus. That's interesting, isn't it? What do you get from Jesus when you drink? Well, in, in some of the things that we're going to talk about uh, in these next sessions, we're going to talk about drinking from him and what we get from him when we drink that will literally change the world that we live in which is really important. We're going to go on to the next picture in just a moment. But before we do, it says this, that in drinking of him, drinking of Jesus, drinking literally God, drinking so much of him, 
drinking so much of the Holy Spirit that he literally flows out of us, as one translation says, in torrents. Now, if torrents aren't coming from your life, you think about torrents. That speaks of flood measures and volumes of water. And so floods can't be ignored. Floods can't be just uh, casually acknowledged. Floods demand attention. And if the flood of life that's coming from your life is not changing life around you, then it may not be in flood proportions or torrent proportions. It may be a dribble. And if it is a dribble or just, you know, a little bit of leakage coming out from our life, then Jesus says, come to me and drink and drink so much. Learn to drink, drink from me so much that literally what comes out of you are rivers of living water, torrents of living water. And they fuel and they, they change and they uh, alter life around us. But I'd like us to now to go back to Exodus the 30, or the 17th chapter, and let's grab another picture, the one that we really want to focus in on today. While you're turning there, remember Paul said to the church in Corinth, he said that they drank from the rock, which was Christ. These people back in this Old Testament on this first picture, they were drinking from a rock, and that rock was Jesus. So prayer is a picture of drinking. Now that's an interesting picture, isn't it? We don't think so much about prayer being drinking, but actually it is. And so let's look at this second picture and see what else prayer is. If you'll look at verse eight, it says, then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the hilltop. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and grew weary. So the other men, that was Aaron and Hur, took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua mowed down and disabled Amalek and his people with the sword. Now, Let's go back and look at this picture. Amalek had come to fight against the children of Israel. And instead of Moses getting down and, and, you know, showing that he liked and loved his people and his leaders by getting in there and fighting with them, fighting side by side, he actually did something different. He left the valley that all of these people were fighting in Joshua and all the, all the men of, of Israel fighting, and he left them, and could you bring that rod? He went up to the mountain with this rod in his hands. Now, the rod of God, the rod that Moses took with him, the rod that Moses took with him, thank you so much, I'll have you come up and be Moses in just a bit. No, not right here. <laughs> the Moses, uh, the rod that he uh, took with him was the rod, the same one that he planted in River Nile and it turned into blood. It was the same rod that way back in Exodus, the third chapter, uh, he, he, uh, when he picked it up, it became a snake. He laid it down. Remember that? And also in Pharaoh's court, the same thing. This rod then to the children of Israel that was always there visible, was a symbol of the authority of God that Moses had. And so when Moses, uh, when he ascended out of the valley, instead, in it, instead of in the valley using his rod to, to hit people, 
He took the, the symbol of his authority in God, he took it up to the mountain, which is very, very pictorial for us. Rather than fighting life situations as a natural person and dealing and grappling as a natural person, he ascended into, a, into the mountain. Now what we see by that is in Ephesians, the first chapter, Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, was seated far above, he was raised far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. But not only that, in Ephesians, the second chapter in verse six, it says that we have been raised with him. So where are principalities and powers? The, the enemies that would try to just uh, absolutely grab your attention and try to bring you down to fight on that level. They're under our feet, aren't they? Yes. And so Moses gives us a picture then of taking his place or taking a, his position of highest authority that he could deal with the situation wasn't down there. It was up here in a place in God with the rod of God in his hand. And so we see in this story that when he lifted the rod up, that the enemies, uh, the enemies of Israel were prevailed over by the children of Israel. But when his arms got tired and they began to lower, that the enemies of Israel began to prevail against the children of Israel. And so it went back and forth, you know, and maybe it, it, the, evidently, uh, because it's in the scripture that they prevailed when his arms uh, were heavy and became, became tired. The enemies of God prevailed. It must have happened uh, more than once that they were able to see, oh, something's happening when you get tired. And so then he put it back up again. Oh, they're doing better. They seem to be doing better. And then he got tired. Oh, they seem to not be doing so good. So they caught on. Sometimes it takes us a little while to catch on. And so uh, we get this story then of, of Moses then um, sitting on a rock. And could you come back up here? And you're going to just be Moses. I was really serious about that. We'll sit you on a rock right here. They sat him on a rock. And this whole story, you know, we could talk about people who help like Aaron and her. There's, this story is really broad and wide, but we're going to only look at Moses this morning. And um, Moses kept the, rock, the rod in his hand. Aaron and her held his hands up. But what we want to look at this morning in this picture is that he sat on a rock. Now, earlier in, in Exodus, the 17th chapter, water came out of a rock. Isn't that right? And that rock was a picture of Jesus, right? And not only just Jesus in general, but because it is a rock, it speaks about the eternal nature of God, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the provision that comes out of Jesus is, is, can absolutely be counted on in any generation or any situation of life. He has been a provider, he is a provider, and he will forever be a provider. He's a provider of wisdom. He's a provider of, of finances. He's a provider of joy. He's a provider of peace. Aren't you thankful for the provider? Yeah. Hallelujah for the provider. And so we see that picture in the first part of Exodus 17 about the rock. But now we have another rock. Same chapter. It's a different rock. But again, it's very, very particular Every detail of this story tells something about our engagement with God. So Moses, we see, you can put your hands down. And <laughs> <laughs> we can see that in this particular battle, they did different things in different battles, but in this particular battle, it, 
it lasted long enough that a man holding a rod over his head got tired. Don't you like the kind of prayers that when you pray them and you open your eyes, shazam, it's done, <laughs> it's changed, voila, it's just wonderful. I mean, instantaneously, it's changed. I like those kind. Um, anybody pray some prayers that when you open your eyes, nothing's changed? Indeed. And there are a lot of things, and that doesn't mean that you're not, a, you're not praying right. There are some things that we pray that involve the changing of people, that, that involve the changing of whole situations. We're praying for nations. Those things aren't necessarily changed in just a day as the purpose and the plan of God unfold and change things. And so you, you need something that's going to give you sustainability for a period of time, don't you? Now, where it comes to uh, our salvation and things that have been already bought and paid for our redemptive blessings in Jesus, we go to that rock and drink them. That's what came out of him. So we can receive healing and blessing and all. But there are other things that have to do with the enemies in the earth, enemies in the pr principalities and powers that affect things that are going on in the earth. And the only way that we are able to have sustainability to pray and not give up and to pray and pray in the spirit where things are really dealt with instead of coming and descending back down here and then start using our own strength and our own anger and our own emotion. It starts engaging us and pulling us into, into the emotion of what we're praying. I'm telling you what, all the emotion in the world is not going to change the world. There has to be an ascending for a child of God, a prayer that you come up into, to, into who you are as a child of God. But I want us to see something in this story. This rod, if you can just stand up uh, up on the platform, th this rod in his hand, and you raise it above your hands, is a symbol of authority. I thank God for the mes message of the authority of the believer, don't you? Aren't you thankful that you just don't have to take it on the chin? And that you just ha don't just have to just smile and just take it when the devil dishes it out? Aren't you glad that the work of the Lord Jesus gave you a divine right to say no? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's just say no right now. No. God gave us that right to say no. All right, so we have, we have the rod of God in our hand. But for sustainability, what Moses what Moses demonstrated to us as prayers is for a, a long-standing situation, uh, you're going to get weary of just using your authority and, uh, and binding and loosing and saying what is and what is not. And, and, uh, and, there's, and when that begins to lower, because getting a little bit weary and things haven't changed overnight... There's been some good things happen, but it hasn't changed overnight. The, the, as it lowers, as it lowers, as it lowers, the enemy begins to prevail and things begin to happen. And you look and you think, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, better get it back up, better get it back up. <laughs> so we get it back up again. We get it back up again and, and use our authority and, and, and thank God for the place that we can stand in his righteousness. And it was very particular in this story that, that Moses stood on the mountain. And there's much in the scripture about standing. How about even Ephesians, the sixth chapter, where you put on the armor of God and you're able to stand. Ah, and that's wonderful about standing. But there is even a higher place to operate in God than just standing. And that is sitting. <laughs> Go ahead and sit. Aren't you glad? You had no idea when you came to church today you were going to have to work so hard. Up and down he goes. But now is sitting. You think about it. Where, where do kings, uh, where do kings operate? 
They sit, don't they? Then there are those who stand before him, who stand before him, and they operate, they do things at his bidding. But Moses then sat, and where did he sit? He sat on a rock. Now, he could have just as easily sat on a stump. He could have just sat on, on the ground. But the, the Bible's very particular. He sat on a rock. He sat on a stone. That's nice, isn't it? Now, I'd like you to look in your Bible at, at a verse of Scripture about this. Can you just be still there? All right. If you look in 1 Peter... First Peter. Now the rock speaks to us, as we were saying before, the rock speaks to the eternal nature, the endurability of our God. He cannot come to an end and his purposes will not be upended. What God has purposed will come to pass. Isn't that amazing? So it was a rock he sat on. And let's just look something about a rock here. It says in verse 4, if you will look at verse 4, come to him then. Come to him, that living stone, which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen. This is 1 Peter 2, verse 4. Chosen and precious in God's sight. Come and like living stones be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. For thus it stands in scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion uh, a chosen, honored, precious chief cornerstone and he who believes in him shall never be put to shame. Now I love that. That's really powerful. Whoever believes in him shall never be put to shame. Now what happens sometimes when we are in a situation that is long-standing, praying for a nation, nations, we're praying even for you know, other situations that uh, have to evolve and change and have to do with the moving and the changing and the, uh, of people. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just change people overnight? <laughs> like screw something off with their head and adjust it and, or just how about just hit them? <laughs> just slap a change on them. But then somebody would slap you probably then too. But anyway, there has to be, there has to be a su sustainability because we will reap if we faint not. But, but uh, time can be a factor and, and uh, the, the gravity of a situation can be a, a, a factor to get you to faint. To, as you look at it, can get you to faint. Now, so what happened here... This rock, this rock, this precious stone, this verse of scripture says that he who believes in him, what happens in prayer a lot of times when we're just raising that rod um, and we find that we lower it and, uh, and we get tired and we raise it back up and then we, we lower it again. What happens sometimes is that we'll start trying harder in prayer. We'll try harder and we'll put more energy into prayer. And, and we get more serious in prayer. And it's just so serious. And pretty soon we just start shaking in prayer. You know, it's just <laughs> serious. <laughs> and, it, it, and if we could just try harder. But it, then it shifts from his strength then to our strength. And we're finding really, in essence, that what we're doing is descending out of a place that is given to us, that is over, we start descending into the situation and start trying to, to fix it. And we are speaking about it. 
speaking against it, but from a lower place. So how we stay up on this, on the mountain, is, is by sitting. Just sit. Now what's a wonderful thing about sitting, I don't know if all of you guys can see, but when you sit on a stone, or Moses sat on the stone, and he's sitting here on this place on the platform, you become a unit with that thing. You're not just on it, but when you sit on something, it gives you a better position of being one with that thing. Jesus said this in John the, the, the 15th chapter. He said, if you abide in me, and what? My words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. But the reason why that amazing promise is given that you can ask what you will and it will be done to you is because you are, you're very conscious of your oneness with him. Your stability isn't based upon your ability to stand, not on your own legs, not the strength of your legs. All weight has been, of your body has been removed and now the weight of your person is no longer even upon your legs, even though you have a right to stand, even though you're standing on solid ground, but sitting removes the weight from your own person and plants you on the rock. You're not holding yourself up, that rock is holding you up. It's a, it's a different level and a different place of faith. Faith can be a shield. Faith can, can uh, because the word of God, the word of God is also the sword of the spirit and you can wield that sword in faith. But what, what sitting does is a picture of rest. And this is so dynamic and active and amazing and powerful. And yet sitting is even more. Because when we rest, God goes to work. Hallelujah. There are other situations represented in this room where you've done everything you've known to do. I'm not just talking about naturally, I'm talking about spiritually. But I tell you what, there is nothing like trust that gives thrust to the plan of God. Amazing things happen when you enter into rest. Now from this position, lift up the rod. Now based upon, it is, what didn't just say that he just sat on the rock and watched from the rock. But from the rock, he used his authority. Two things, isn't that interesting? He came to this place of rest, and this place of rest, of course, is a picture of him sitting on the infallibility of God himself, the faithfulness of God himself, God in his word that will never pass away, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He sits on that. He rests upon that. It's holding him up. But from that place, he uses his authority. Now, the sustainability this position, especially with the assistance of Aaron and her on either side, this can go on and can go on and can go on. This never changes. He's here to stay until the enemy is soundly defeated. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, this picture, this picture of rest is something that God wants us to absolutely embrace. I want you to look in your Bible, please, with me. Except my Bible is down there. I love this. We get, we just can migrate to a different. <laughs> if you'll go with me in your Bible to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Yes. 
Hebrews 4, in verse 3. For we who have believed, believed, do enter into what? Rest. Enter into rest in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he said, although his works had been completed and prepared from the foundation of the world. I want to just read some other verses having to do with rest. If you'll look at verse 9, so then there is awaiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. For he who has once entered God's rest has also ceased from the weariness and pain of human labors, just as God rested from those labors, particularly his own. Let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter that rest, that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience. Now, with this particular part, I'd like us to link these two pictures in Exodus, the 17th chapter, together. Notice in this first example that water came out of a rock. In John, the 7th chapter, which we went to, it says that Jesus, on that last day of the feast, that great day of the feast, stood and cried with a loud voice, if anybody's thirsty, let him come to me and to drink. Now, about that feast, that particular feast, it started on the Sabbath, which is a day of rest, and it ended on a Sabbath, which also is a day of rest. So on that particular, this last great day of the feast, what the priests would do is go to the pool of Siloam and would fill a pitcher, a gold pitcher of water, and then would ascend back to the temple, and they would pour the water out on the altar. That altar, that water would run down. And it was a day of great, great rejoicing. Tremendous rejoicing. Because of the memory, they would call to memory this, this portion of scripture that we just read in Exodus, the 17th chapter. When God gave water out of a rock, they would remember with great joy that when there was no natural means of provision, that God could give provision in the wilderness. Amen. And so when we come to Jesus and drink, when we come to him and drink, what we're drinking is not just the memory, but the experience of a God who has in the past provided for his own. A God who, no matter what circumstance his people were in, when there was no way for them to make it, we drink from the reality that we are worshiping and coming to drink from a God who can meet every single need. Today, for about five seconds, I'd like you just to rift, lift up your voice and your hands and drink from this one, this precious Jesus, that he is meeting all your needs. Hallelujah. 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 There is no wilderness so removed from God that divine provision cannot flow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, that's enough praising. We'll let you praise in a little bit. So they, they drink from a memory of what was, of what he did, what God has done. And it's a wonderful thing to remember. There is a rest that happens in us. There is a wonderful rest that can come to our heart when we remember what God has done. Things that make your soul get all bothered and wrought up and all in fear about what am I going to do and what, what's going to happen can begin to be uh, ministered to if you remember what God has already done. 
So we remember and we enter into the rest that he provided in the past. So that first Sabbath speaks to us of a rest that, uh, of, of his victory and what he has done in the past. But this last great day of the feast also was a Sabbath day or a day of rest. And all of these things are purposeful. All of these things God did on purpose. And so when Jesus said, you come to me and drink, you come to me and drink, it's not just then drinking of what Jesus was able to do, and what God has done for people in the past, but we are drinking from a God who is and will ever be. And even though we don't know in our mind how he's going to work things out, we can enter into a rest knowing the God that was is the same God who is and the same God who will ever be. And we can literally drink the end of a situation. Isn't that amazing? We don't just drink what did happen when God did do great things. But in advance, we can drink the end, the victorious end of any situation we're in. And the more you drink the end from the one who said, I am the beginning and I am the, I am the first and I am the, I am the alpha and I am the, when you drink the end of a matter, you begin to see the end of a matter. You begin to see the end as God sees it. And knowing the end, maybe you don't know how the situation will end, but knowing the end in the person of the end, the Omega himself, puts you at rest. You can literally sit on God, become a unit with God. You can say, let time tick on. Let the winds of hell blow. I am not moving. Because God was and God is, and I also know the end of the matter. And the name of the end of this matter is nothing less than Jesus himself. He said, you come to me and you drink that. If you're thirsty, if you're starting to get weary, your hands are starting to slump, you're starting to stagger a little bit in the knees, you're, you're getting weary. Rather than trying to just bolster yourself up and try to do better and be stronger, don't. Come to him and drink. And that water gives you rest. Remember what Jesus said? In Matthew, the 11th chapter, in verse 23, or 28, he said, those that are weary, he said, come to me, you who, weary, who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you, I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. What, does you, what do we get rest from? We get rest from knowing what God has done, but we also get rest from knowing that he is the end of a matter. Amen. Hallelujah. So for your family this morning, for your own life this morning, for your business or your job, your future, for the future of this nation, we can declare and we can come to one and drink the end of the matter. Isn't that wonderful? And in drinking the end of a matter, there's such victory in it. We're drinking victory and we're drinking strength. Not only that, but Jesus said, I will give you rest. And then he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly and I will give you rest for your souls. There may be, there may be something that we are to do with our authority. There may be something that we're to engage in the situation and declare and prophesy and proclaim. There may be something like that that we're to do, but it's not in our own strength of trying to make it happen. It's because we're seated upon, we're seated upon a rock 
That rock is God himself. Amen. He never will change. He never has to change because he is perfect. He is a rock and he is our God. Hallelujah. I'd like you just to put your hands up to him and let's magnify our rock again today. Oh, Father, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides him. Neither is there any rock like our God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a rock in a weary land. He is the shelter in the time of storm. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. Our hopes are not attached to people. Our hopes are not attached to good desires and wonderful wishes. Our hopes are planted on the rock. Bless the name of the Lord. Our, our hopes are planted in nothing less than God himself. Our hopes are planted in the one who was, in the one who is, and in the one who is to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you today that today is a, a day for hands to be lifted up that have been hanging down, for knees to be strengthened that have been feeble, and that people can just take a weight off their feet and sit down, sit down upon a one who will not change. Sit down upon the faithfulness. Sit down upon the stability of one who cannot lie. Oh, I thank you that in your word you said that you are this rock, this chosen stone, and that anyone who believes in you, who believes, not climbs the highest mountain, who swims oceans and is just an amazing person. No, all you said is if we would believe in you, that we would not be ashamed. I declare over this group this morning, Lord, that in their personal lives, that as they exercise not more strength, not, not their own personal endurance or, or exercising their own abilities, but as they lean and trust and rest upon you, that they will not be ashamed. That the way that circumstance changes and moves will be a way that you are glorified in them. You'll be glorified in their marriage. You'll be glorified in their family. You'll be glorified in relationships. You'll be glorified in their jobs. They'll, you'll be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Be glorified as the will of God comes to pass. And that will of the enemy is abated and, and comes to naught in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray in the Holy Spirit just a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I see in my heart somebody. You've done everything you've known to do, and you have used your authority. And you've used it again and yet again and yet again. And it seems like there's been some 
changes, but then there have been setbacks. There's even been one that there's been a, a step forward and it seems that you've taken two steps back in a matter that's very important to you. The Lord invites you just to come to Him and rest. To rest. But what will happen if I don't fight? What will happen if I don't fight and stand against it? What will happen? Well, if you give up, nothing good will happen. If you just give up. But if you'll come over and give over to Him and rest upon Him, His sure word. Those pictures that have been coming to your mind of defeat, you've already started picturing it. You've never spoken it. You've never spoken it with your mouth, but you've pictured it. And it's brought some fear and it's brought some concern. And so based upon those pictures, you have prayed harder, but you've gotten weary. And God invites you today to come to the rock and be refreshed. Be refreshed with a certain future. A certain future. Be refreshed with the life that comes from Him who knows the thoughts that He has for you, that they are good and not evil, to give you an expected end, a good end. Be refreshed and drink from the one. He's already commanded your victory. Come and be refreshed and sit in rest. <laughs> and from this place of rest, great joy, great joy, great peace. And constant, constant support to your authority. Hey, Namastoka. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I would like to pray a prayer for anyone who has come here today. And you've come to church today, but you don't remember that you've ever come to Jesus to be your Lord. Coming to church is a really wonderful thing, but church is just to enable and to help you and to encourage you and start pointing and pointing to Him, help you get to Him. And so today I'm going to pray a prayer in just a moment for those anybody that is here today that has never asked Jesus to come into your life and you've never had the amazing experience of His life coming into your life. That'll happen today and your life can be changed. I'd also like to pray a prayer for anybody here this morning. You've, you've gotten so distracted from Jesus and it's pulled you into a place where you've just started fighting life on your own. You've ended up fighting yourself. And uh, you've gotten very unaware of His presence in your life. But today you're not in church by accident. And I want to pray a prayer for you today that you can come back home to Him, come back to a real conscious awareness of His presence in your life. I also want to give an invitation to anybody here. Just a little bit ago, this congregation prayed in a, their, a, a, their personal prayer language to God. What a wonderful experience it is and blessing it is to be able to pray beyond your own ability to put words together. But the Holy Spirit can give you a language and a prayer that is perfect 
from Him and be filled with His presence and His, a consciousness of His power to help you be a, a witness in this world. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, in just a moment, I want to give you an opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I spoke about three groups of people. The first one was, if you've never been born again, today is that day. Today is the day to come and ask Jesus to come into your life. Or if you just need to come home to Him, come, come back to a consciousness of His presence, His power, His love in your life, not worrying He's going to scold you and be angry with you. Just know that He's been looking for this day to take you in, help you. Or if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, this promise is to anybody who is born again. This promise is to you. And I would just like for you right now, for any one of those three invitations, anywhere in this room, if one of those three invitations apply to you, I'd like you just to lift up your hand anywhere in this room. Just lift up your hand and say, please pray for me. I see that hand. Anybody else? Yes, 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 yes. Any one of those three or more of those three invitations, if any of those apply to you, if you just lift up your hand. I'm seeing your hands. I'm looking again, though. If, if you didn't raise your hand, but you wished you would have, could you just lift your hand and say, that was me? That's me. I want prayer today. Those of you that raised your hands, could you please open your eyes and look at me, please? I saw your hand, but most importantly, the Lord did. And, uh, and you raised your hand to Him. And He's saying today to come to me. Come to me. There's some things that He has to give to you that no one else can. Nothing else can. No job, no person. Only Him. And so I would like you, I would like to do exactly what I said I would do. I want to pray for you and I want you just to come. Those of you that raised your hand, if you raised your hand, I, I invite you to come. If you didn't raise your hand, but you sure wish you would have, as these are coming, come, I'd like to pray for you. And join me right here in the front. I'm so glad you raised your hand. Thank you. From deep if you raised your hand this morning, He's waiting for you. He has something to give to you today. And He never disappoints. I'll wait for just a moment because there were some others who raised their hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a I'm so glad you came today. You've come to Him. And uh, He's got things for you today. Can I just pray for you right now? And lift a hand up to the Lord. That's where your help is coming from today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for each of these that stand before you. They've come to you. And you said, whoever comes to you, you won't cast them out. You're not going to cast them out and you're not going to disappoint them. I thank you. Each of these people I just can sense are so unique and individual and the needs that they have and the thirst that they have in their lives are so unique. And you want to meet each spiritual need and will do so today in Jesus' precious name. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the crooked things being made straight today. I thank you for rough things in their life being made smooth. I thank you that they are connecting with you today and you've got a good future and a good hope for them. 
that will not disappoint in Jesus precious name amen if you open your eyes you're not finished yet pray and there's some personal things that people will pray with you about right now I'd like you to go with this man if you will and they'll take you to a personal place a pri private place to pray so glad you came today God bless you let's thank God for these dear folks you'll go with him now hallelujah Praise the Lord. Oh, let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. My goodness, what a presence of the Spirit of God that is here. I'll tell you something, the healing power of God is in this place. The healing power of God is in this place. As, as you are seated right now, begin to receive your healing from that seated place from that place of rest, from that place of the presence of Almighty God. There are things going on in here right now. The miraculous is taking place. Signs, wonders, miracles, demonstrations of the healing power of God. Just receive, come on, receive. Just say, I receive, I receive. I receive the healing power of God in my body. I receive the work of the Holy Spirit the work in joints, the work in bones, the work in nerves and sinews. Nerves, nerves coming alive right now. There are nerves in your body coming alive right now. The healing, healing power of God. Spine, spine, the working of the miracle of God in spine. Spine, areba shakare, discs being healed, toes being healed, nose being healed, sinuses, sinus, sinus problems, sinus problems clearing up right now, ears, ears, ears popping open, popping open, popping open right now, somebody's ears popped open right now, whose ears popped open, let me see, raise your hand, whose ears? Somebody's ears popped as I said that. Who? Who? Where? Where? Wave at me. Somebody wave at me. Ears right back there. Did your ears pop right now? Are you hearing better? Hearing better? Yeah. Praise God. Come on. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Receive. Receive. Say, I receive. I, receive. I believe. I receive the healing flow of God. Come on, just keep receiving. Just keep receiving. Keep receiving. Thank you, Lord. Those that are watching on the internet right now, healing power of God is moving in you and through you. Receive it. Receive Him. Receive what He's doing on the inside of you. Receive. Receive the clearing, the clearing of your mind. The, clear, the ability to think properly. The, a miracle mind, a miracle mind. Say, I have, I have a, miracle mind. a miracle mind. I have, I have a, supernatural a supernatural mind. I have the ability, have the ability to, recall. to recall. I'm not slowing down. I'm, not slowing down. I'm speeding up. My mind is energized by the presence of God. Now take that. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take hold of it. Take hold of the goodness of God. Take hold of the power of God. Take hold of the presence of God. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost with me. We're not done yet. We're not through yet. Oh, drink from the waters. Drink from the waters of the rock. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to thank the Lord for this. Thank the Lord for the moving of the Holy Spirit. Thank the Lord for the moving of the Holy Ghost. 
Thank the Lord for the miracles in our church. Miracle working power of God. Miracle working power of God. Demonstrations in this congregation of the miraculous. Demonstrations. Demonstrations of the miracle power of God. The miracle power of God. There is a brand new, fresh, deep anointing that is working on the inside of you to lay hands on the sick, to see them made well and whole. This has been a heart's desire, a heart's desire to flow in that place of miracles and healing. <clears throat> and there's a new step today. It began last week when I was talking to you and all through this week, it's been moving. That power has been moving on the inside of you and you'll begin to see and operate in this. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Full mobility. How many of you take that right now? Full mobility. Full mobility. Fullness of stretch. Arthritis. You bow your knee to the name of Jesus. There's a working right now of, of those who have had arthritis. And I see arthritis just falling, falling, falling off you, falling off hands, fingers, legs, full of that. Knees, 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 knees. Sing a little bit, David. Sing a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. with arthritis, you come up here right now. It's time to minister. It's time to minister to you. It's time to, as they come, David, sing that again. Sing it again as they come. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come up here. Come on. Pastor John, come on. Sing it big now. Let's stand again. Praise God. Oh, 
Dr. Tony, come on. Uh, Cindy, you need to help up here. Terry? Yeah. Yeah. Gene Bailey, is Gene, is, Gene, is he gone or is he directing? Or is, he's here? Okay, Gene, can you get somebody else to direct? You need to come out here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you, do you all sense the faith of God just throughout this whole service, the faith of God rising up on the inside of you, drinking from the rock, drinking from that rock, resting in the presence of God. And this is a demonstration right here of what has been ministered and what has been preached. Those of you that are online right now, you need, he, th there is an anointing right now where arthritis is concerned to absolutely bat that thing out of this place. Are you ready to take, are you ready to take? Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over our internet congregation, delivered now from arthritis. Arthritis, you are a name. You bow your knee to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Say, I take that. Say, I take that. I take that. I take that. I take that. So here's what we're going to do. Guys, we are going to, we're going to minister to these folks. And today what we'll do is we'll just, each one of you take someone, just minister to them. My goodness, come here, come here, here. Come here, Gene. <laughs> Praise God. You know, the, the anointing that you had experienced, not only in this ministry, but all of the other ministries that you've been associated with, and I know uh, that some of you may not know this, but, but Gene ran Benny Hinn's ministry for a while, worked for his ministry for a while on television. He's been around that anointing. And there's something about that anointing, that particular anointing, that just, I, I just, I take my part of that. Amen. Amen. That healing power of God. Amen. And that's what the Lord had Benny Hinn right. walk in. But that came, that came down through Catherine Kuhlman. That's correct. And Catherine Kuhlman was, my, I think, probably my first person that I ever saw operating in that, that healing anointing. And I'm just saying this because the Lord wants the whole kit and caboodle. He wants, he wants everything in His church. Just jam, pack it with everything that He's made available right. to us. And there is... Because of that place that you've not only been around Pastor Benny, but you've been around minister after minister after minister after minister, watching, studying, participating. You've been preaching yourself, but now the time has come for the next level and the next step of not only your preaching ministry, but your healing ministry. The time has come, Gene Bailey, to lay hands on the sick and hurting and broken and see them made well and healed and whole. So you've not just come to this church to help us in the administrative things that you're doing, but there is a deep, deep place in the ministry of the word and the ministry to the people. So it has begun today. Today is the official start day. And that word that Brother Copeland spoke over Terry and me in 2004, that there was a new healing ministry that was taking place. I've been praying over that for 10 years. 10 years I've been praying over that. And I have seen that the time has come for this church and its pastoral staff and its people to walk in a degree of the healing ministry that we've never walked in before. The time has come. The time is here. Time has come and the time is here. So now we have before us these precious people of God. Your time has come. Your time has come. 
Your time has come. Yours has come. Your time 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 has come. Your time, your time, your time, your time, your time. Our time has come. I'm telling you folks, when you come to church at Eagle Mountain, you might as well expect God to do things like this. You better come in here. You better come in here with a high expectation. A high expectation. Because we've gone to the next place. We've gone to the next level. We've gone into the next move that He has for us here. And we will see demonstrations. We will see the moving of the gifts of the Spirit. So David, sing it again. And we will now lay hands on these folks. Guys, just spread out. Spread out. Do it. Do it. Sing it boldly. of your deliverance. In the name of Jesus, take hold. Take hold of your freedom and mobility. Freedom, 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 freedom. Where's it been affecting? Where's the person? Yeah, yeah. Just begin, just begin. Just begin to move, 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 move. children their parents in here or grandparents for grandchildren Just lift your hand right now if you need healing for your children healing 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 power of God flooding flowing flowing throughout this place and father I what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a sea of hands here sea of hands let me see your hands like this let me see your hands like this in the name of Jesus, in this healing flow that we are in, I commission you 
right now to lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your grandchildren and expect the healing power of God to flow into them and drive out every infirmity. Now we take hold with the Word of God and we declare them whole. Say, my child is free. My children are free. My grandchildren are free. Anybody with great grandchildren in here? Great, great, great grandchildren. Let me say this. Great, great, great grandchildren. Great, great grandchildren. They're free. They're delivered. They are delivered. They are delivered. And your Let me see the hands of the grandchildren and the great, great the great grandchildren rather great grandchildren great let me see your hands great 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 grandchildren I'll tell you the Lord has given me a word from them right now from from faith to faith and glory to glory they will fulfill the will of God they will do what God has called them to do do not carry the care. Do not carry the worry. Do not carry the heaviness of what may be going on in the family. They will fulfill the plan of God. And you will live to see the day that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You'll see it. You'll see it. You'll see it. You will see it. It is time to live long, finish strong. It is time for you and I to reach for 120. 120 good, strong years. Strong years. Healed years. Whole years. Eyesight. Sharp ears, hearing clear, youth renewed. Say that's us. That's us. You can tell your friends you you go to a church where they are believing to live 120 years. 120 good, strong, powerful years. Come on, lift your hands and give the Lord glory. Give him glory. Yes, testimony, testimony, testimony. Yes, Pastor Kamar Dodi. Okay, and it's trying to find some place where we can see her. I can go up Thank the steps. you, Jesus. She can go up the steps now. She would like to demonstrate. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got to go up more. Okay, she Hallelujah. says, I'm going all the way to the top. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Testimony. Hallelujah. Now this started working in you about two weeks ago, right? Two, three, I mean, weeks, two ago. three weeks ago. And there were other things going on in her body that were pretty serious, but the Lord showed her and it really was in line with what Patsy was saying today. Just yield and believe, just trust the Lord. And she did. And, and these other things just have faded away. But then she started noticing something else had changed. And the next thing she knew, she could come upstairs that she couldn't go up before. They were doing things she couldn't do before. And she said, all that just about two weeks ago. So, you know, this is the second time in a row, Pastor, that we've had somebody in the congregation step up and testify for everybody to hear it's already working. It's already working. God bless you, Dodie. You're precious. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch her do it. Everybody watch her and say glory to God. God. Glory to God. Glory Praise to God. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I remember Dodie's in the choir. And I remember having just about help her up, help her down. Sometimes couldn't even make it up here. But that didn't look like somebody that needed no. help. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. No. Somebody with testimony about arthritis, being delivered from arthritis. Who? Who? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Neck. 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 Look at his neck. Look, praise Look at his God. neck. Look at his neck. Glory. Thank you, Praise Jesus. you, Jesus. Praise
praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Who else? Who else? Who else? Arthritis. Gone, gone, gone. Who else? Testimony. Somebody. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on? Your back. My fingers, I couldn't even bend them. Couldn't bend her fingers because of her back. Yes, my back had a lot of pain. All the pain is gone in Praise her back, God. and she's going to do it. Show her fingers. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more testimony. Maybe it was, yeah, right here. Left hand, left Praise hand. Praise God. God. Look at that. Hallelujah. Look at that. Wow. 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 I'll tell you, it's like popping popcorn in yeah, here. I know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. We I need to receive an offering for Patsy. Oh, Patsy so, needs an offering. If you want Let's to sit at Pastor it, yeah. Bubbles' chair, you can go right ahead. I want you to be seated if you would. We're going to Bubbling go ahead over. and receive this offering for Patsy. What a message that was. Oh, what an explosion. You know, it, it reminded me what that message, what that message was, that, what that message was, Mission Impossible, you know, when they light the fuse? Well, at the end of the fuse, there's usually an explosion. So we got the explosion. We got the explosion. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bless Patsy. Uh, if you're writing a check, EMIC, we'll make sure that she receives all of this offering. Um, if you like an envelope, raise your hand. Or if you're on the front row, raise your hand. We have an, if you're on the front row, raise your hand. Uh, we have envelopes in the seat in front of you out here. Uh, those of you that are watching online, click the online giving. Your information will come before you. And uh, I'm so glad that David Ellis is with us. Because I asked him about a song and I mean, I'm, I'm pulling it from a deep place, but, but who do we turn to? That's the question. Who do we turn to? It's, it, we go to the rock. We go to the rock. Arch, just go ahead and wait on the people. Come on, let's sing. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builder rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builder rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. Shelter when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock, I go to the rock, go to the rock, I go to the rock. One four, I go to the rock, go to the rock, I go to the rock, go to the rock, I go to the rock, go into the rock, I go to the rock, go into the rock, I go to the rock. When I need a shelter. song we won't do it this way but I was thinking you know, sit on the rock but we won't go there but that's a really good way to look at you go, sit on the rock okay yeah hmm altar ministers if you would please come tonight at 6 30 Patsy will be back I am so looking forward to what is going on in this place altar ministers if you would please come as we go today if there's anything that you would like to have prayer over specifically please come to the altar Father, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you for this morning, for this time that we've had together. And we, we glorify you that you are the rock that we sit upon, that sustains us, helps us, takes us where we need to go. 
In Jesus' name, we pray over this service tonight and thank you for all you're going to do in our presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Don't forget this. Jesus is Lord. Give a shout of praise to God. You guys are dismissed. Jesus is Lord. And he's Lord in your life. He's Lord in the life of this church. And today's message just really kind of set us on a path for growing in our prayer life. In our circles, we talk so frequently about standing, but we learn today about setting, about setting in the presence of God, resting in His presence, because He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. And with that, being able to, to set on that rock, to set on Him, to become a unit with Him, as, a, as a Patsy Caminetti shared with us, when we set with God, when we sit in Him, we become one with Him. And that's where our rest comes from. That's where our provision comes from. And I, I think that was just a, a, an amazing way, an amazing message of our connection and our oneness with God. Now, during the, the time of testimony and the altar, altar call today, we saw that there were five of you that had, in a sense, raised your hands electronically to be prayed for. There's one testimony of a man's ears being opened up during that service. So God is present here and he is present with you as well. And we are so thankful. We praise God for the work he's doing in, in, in this medium on the internet, being able to reach you, to contact you, to connect you, and that he's working with you where you are. We, are, we praise God for your ears being opened. Glory to God. For those of you that had raised your hand for prayer, let's lift our hands together now and we're gonna to continue to pray with you and believe God with you for the changes in your life that you're believing for. Lord God, I thank you for this precious, precious congregation. I call them blessed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you know the needs, you know the desires, you, you know the, the, the prayer request of, of, of the precious people that are watching online today. And I thank you, Lord God, that as they have lifted that up to you, as they set in place in, in unison with you, as they rest in you, that you, Lord God, go to work in their lives. You are the one that brings the change, that brings the alteration, that brings the adjustment that needs to be made in people and in situations and in circumstances. And Lord God, once we set in that place of resting, we let it go. We let it go. We just let it be and we let you do the work. Thank you for your healing power working in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's a key, is once you've given it over to God, let it go. Give it over into His hands. There's no power in your worry. There's no power in your fretting. There is no power in, in, in your thinking constantly on a situation to change it. The power comes from resting in it and rolling the care of it over to God. So I'm encouraged that you do that today and that you'll, you let, the, let that situation just rest in God's shoulders. Amen. Now we're going to have service again tonight, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We encourage you to be part of, the, part of that service. Uh, Patsy Caminetti will be ministering again on prayer. And if tonight is any, any, and t is any foreshadowing of what's going to happen this evening, good stuff is on, on the way. Good stuff is on the plan for tonight. Thank you again for being with us. God bless you. We love you. Remember that Jesus is Lord.